Hello, welcome along to the Met Office 10-day trend. It's important to mention that over the next several days, there will be quite a lot of fine weather across the UK with a fair bit of sunshine. But it's also important to point out that certainly over the next two or three days, there could be some big thunderstorms. Not everywhere we'll see them, but where they do occur, they could be pretty noteworthy. As we go into next week, the weather looks like turning to a more perhaps typical summer pattern with certainly a cooler feel across the bulk of England and Wales compared to this week. A mixture of sunshine and showers, but still some fine weather to be had. Let's get back to the thunderstorms, however, and take a look at the setup right now. There is a cold front drifting south across the UK. That's already introduced fresher conditions to Scotland and Northern Ireland. But the heat is building across France and spreading northwards on southerly winds. Heat and humidity just wafting over the next 48 hours across parts of the Midlands, southern and eastern England. So it's in this zone with the heat and humidity that we're most likely to see thunderstorms. A couple of rounds of thunderstorms, really. One through Wednesday night and then another one on Thursday night and into Friday. Thunderstorms drifting northwards, as is always the case with these summer storms. They will be hit and miss. Not everywhere will see the torrential downpours, but where they occur, they could cause some problems with a lot of rain falling in a short space of time. Lots of lightning as well overnight. So we do have a couple of Met Office yellow warnings in place. As I said, they'll be hit and miss by the very nature of these thunderstorms. Not everywhere in the warning zone will catch those downpours, but where they occur, they will be pretty lively. For more details on the warnings, of course, check the website or check the app. Beyond that, this little swirl here, that area of low pressure, bringing the second batch of thunderstorms, heads away into the North Sea into the weekend. And although there are weather systems gathering out in the west and to the south, both of which look like giving a bit of a pincer movement for Sunday, well, ahead of that, most places look like having a decent day on Saturday, largely dry and bright. But on Sunday, it does look as if we'll see from those two weather systems more clouds and some rain, which could still, particularly from that feature coming up from the south, be heavy and thundery. So that is one to watch. But basically for many, Saturday is the drier and brighter day of the weekend. What happens beyond that? Well, for that, we need to take a look at the bigger picture and come back to the here and now. This is the setup with the jet stream at the moment, or at least into Thursday, with this big dip down towards Iberia and then pushing northwards. We call this a trough. And it's this, this southerly flow which is allowing all that hot air to spread up from France and Spain and bring the risk of thunderstorms. Fast forward to Monday, however, and the jet stream's in a very similar position. We've still got a, a big trough down to the south, but it's all just shifted over a little bit to the east. Not much, but enough to take the hot air across into the more central parts of Europe. And by this stage, by the early part of next week, we are back on the cool side of the jet. And in this trough area is often where we get slow moving areas of low pressure. So that's the likely setup as we go into early next week. The heat and humidity will have disappeared. Low pressure close by to the UK and the winds around that coming more in from the Atlantic. So bringing more moisture and perhaps more cloud but also, uh, particularly if you don't like the heat, some good news uh, because it will be bringing uh, completely fresher conditions, especially at night, but also by day also. It does mean that there will be showers close by to low pressure for Monday and probably Tuesday as well. But notice there is the Azores high that isn't too far away. There are some signs that that could start to topple back towards the uh, UK as we go through next week. The early part of next week, though, the most likely setup is this with low pressure somewhere to the north of the UK, high pressure down to the southwest and in between a uh, northwesterly flow. So that's going to bring um, cooler conditions and also a mixture of sunshine and showers. Later next week, we could start to see, as I said, this area of high pressure starting to topple in, more likely across more southern parts of the UK. And this pressure trend graph kind of shows that. This is from the European model. Dates going forwards along the bottom there. Blue blocks are low pressure dominant. The red, orange and yellow blocks, high pressure more dominant. And you can see chopping and changing a bit over the next few days. But early next week, Monday and Tuesday, the dominant signal for that low pressure to be nearby 
bringing the risk of showers. But beyond that, just signs that the orange and red may start to dominate. So a greater chance of seeing high pressure towards the back end of next week. Some uncertainty about the shape and size of that high pressure, but the most likely scenario is that the high pressure will build in from the southwest, a return of the Azores high, whereas low pressure will be closer to Iceland. So keeping that Atlantic influence, keeping the winds coming in from the west, but with the driest conditions close to the low pressure, more likely across the south. So, for much of next week, certainly cooler than Wednesday across the bulk of England and Wales, where we're seeing very high temperatures. So, a cooler start next week, generally a mixture of sunshine and showers, but there will still be a lot of uh, sunny weather, uh, particularly, uh, it looks like, across the south towards the back end of next week. Make sure you keep up to date with the very latest. Track those thunderstorms yourself by downloading the Met Office app and watching the radar. And keep up to date with those weather warnings. Best way to do that, of course, through the app, through the website or follow us on social media.